Hi, Randy K7AGE. This is a first of a group of videos aimed towards the technicians, the entry class license, to show them that there's some life be outside of 2 meters and 70 centimeter FM. I picked up this band plan, uh, the ARL band plan the other day at a local ham fest swap meet, and down here in 10 meters, this bottom line is for the novices and technicians, and the technicians have access between 28.0 and 28.5. Now between 28.0 and 28.3 is CW and data and beacons, and the data part can be PSK31, which is very popular. Between 28.3 and 28.5 is where you can operate sideband. So you can have a lot of fun on 10 meters. So in this first video, I'm going to show you how to build a 10 meter dipole. Now this is very easy. You, you can go out and spend money and buy a pre-made dipole, or I'm going to show you how you can build your own. Now I've bought some various bits and pieces, but you may be able to build your own out of some, some plastic and scrape up some wire. So let's look at what the dipole is. And as usual, uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. You can subscribe to it, to my channel here on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter and Google+. So what I'm going to be talking about is a resonant dipole for 10 meters that can be fed with coax and directly connected to your radio. So this is made up of two pieces of wire of equal length. And we're going to feed it with coax. So the coax is going to come up. That's the outer shield and this is the inner conductor. So the outer shield will connect to one of the wires and the center conductor will connect to the other. And what we need to do here is look at the overall length for the wire. So this length is equal to 468 divided by your frequency in megahertz. So we're going to have 468 and I'm going to cut the antenna to 28 Point three, just at the boundary between the data and the voice. 468 divided by 28.3 equals 16.5 feet. Each side is half of that, so that'll be 8 and a quarter feet, or 8 feet 3 inches. So. From the center out will be 8 feet 3 inches, and the same over here, 8 feet 3 inches. So I was at a hand fest swap the other day, and I picked up some parts to build antennas, dipoles. I got some insulators for the end. These are the type that the wire would go through on one side and your rope on the other. I also picked up some of these. They were two for a buck. Picked some of these types up. <clears throat> Again, two for a buck. And these are the eggs style. So the way these work is that the wire goes through one way and the rope goes through the other. But they don't touch, but if the insulator breaks, it'll still hold. I also bought this center insulator uh, for $2. And with this, it's got a couple larger rings in the middle, and you can wrap your coax around there and tie it off, say, with a cable tie and seal it up with some RTV and connect your dipole wires to these lugs and run out to you know, the insulators on each end. But I also found this ballon, ballon, not ballum, ballon, <clears throat> for five bucks. And <clears throat> this is a um, W2UA ballon, and it's written on the bag here, 1.1. And um, so this is nice because you can screw a coax uh, SO259 in the bottom and it has these wires here that you solder on to your dipole wires which you mechanically tie off to these screw eyes and if you can hold this up from the center that would help because this gets to be a lot of weight with the coax. But I wanted to just double check that this is indeed a one-to-one -one ballon and I can use the MFJ antenna analyzer to do that. Let's take a look at that quickly. Okay, so the way I'm going to check my ballon is by placing a known load across the antenna terminals and connect the ballon to the meter. But let's first double check my load here. And what I have is a Tektronix. It's actually a 50 ohm, uh, 5 watt termination. 
So you can see the meter right now is basically infinite SWR because there's nothing connected. So if I connect the 50 ohm load to the, to the meter, you can see it says resistance of 48 ohms and the SWR is very low. And basically as I change frequency here, I'm at 10 megs, I'm going on to 4 megs, it's basically very flat. And we're going to be interested up here at 28. Let's just take a look at that. And the SWR is 1.1 to 1. So let's call that good. Now I'll put the ballon in between the two and we'll double check it. Okay, so now I have my my termination connected to the antenna side of the ballon and through, through coax adapters and a binding post. Anyway, that's connected to the antenna side of, of the ballon. The ballon's connected with a barrel directly into the meter. Let's take a close look at the meter. And you can see the SWR is 1.3, 1.5 on the meter. So I know this is a 1.1 ballon. And that's what I was concerned about to make sure it was really a 1.1 or a 1 to 1 and not a 4 to 1. Also, center insulators can be almost anything. I, I just googled dipole centerpiece and with the images I came up with all of these. There's all sorts of home built ones out of PVC, end caps and T's, uh, pieces of like plexiglass to mount a connector on, um, just all sorts of things you can try. <laughs> and here's another uh, center insulator I found in my uh, jump, junk box. It has an SO 259 so you can hook a coax directly in here and then you um, mechanically connect your your wires through these holes and then electrically solder it to these stubs hanging out and again you can hang it from from the top here like as an inverted V so um, it's got a plus and minus here so you know which one it doesn't really matter so anyway when you find these things at a swap meet just don't buy one buy a couple you know these are handy to have around and you want to build something. So on the way home from the ham fest, I stopped by my do-it-yourself home center and I bought 20 feet of 14 gauge stranded wire insulated. Uh, I've selected red. This was a less than $5. I think it was $4.96. So this whole thing isn't costing me really more than, uh, you know, about $10 or so. Um, a lot of talk about insulated versus non-insulated wire. For what we're doing, don't worry about it. 20 feet of something, get an old extension cord, zip cord, pull the wires apart, that will work too. So this is what I bought. Okay, tools for the project are very simple. A pair of, I have a pair of wire cutter strippers. Uh, I have my soldering gun, because I'm gonna be, it's a little beefy, so I'm gonna use that instead of my iron. I got some solder, and I have a tape measure to measure out the wire. And if George was doing this soldering, I'm sure he had, would have some of his solder flux to put on the joint. I don't have that. Oh, well. Okay, what I'm going to do is just pull this out, loop it around my chair here, and cut it in half. And I'll worry about the actual measuring when we're all done soldering. To find the center, easier. Okay, so that's 20 feet. Divided in half is going to be 10. Just going to come down here and cut the wire. So I have the ballon here, and the first thing I'm going to do is these copper wires, I think this is a little old. I'm going to take some sandpaper and kind of brighten those up. Get some of that tarnish off from there. Okay, I'm going to strip off about an um, inch of the insulation on each of the wires. There's one. There's the other. I'll just twist these back up. Now I'm going to attach the wire to the uh, ballon. I'm going to have about three inches here, so I'm going to pass it through the uh, screw eye here. And I'm going to bring that through. And then I'm going to just wrap that, uh, wrap the wire around itself, you know, two or three times. And then we'll solder those together. So let me do the same on the other end here. Okay, so I'm going to wrap the two two wires together here. One of the ballon is pretty stiff. And when I do this, I want to make sure the tension is to the eye bolt and not to the solder. I want this, the mechanical strength to the eye bolt. And I'll just do the same 
on the other end here as well. And now for the moment we've been waiting for soldering. So the iron is hot and I'm going to place that on there and put the solder, the iron on one side and the solder on the other. If it quit moving around here and that way you know, the heat's transferring through the whole junction and just put a bunch on there. I can see it wicking up towards the wire there. So there's that one and now this one. And there we go. Dipole is just about made. Okay, what I've done is stretch out my wire, my wires and my tape measure on the driveway, and I've left my Sharpie at the eight feet three inches. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it long. I'm gonna cut both of these to nine feet. And we'll worry about the exact length when we tune it. So this is the end insulator that I will use, and of course the wire will just go through here and we'll just bring it back and wrap it around on itself. And that's all you have to do. You don't have to cut these. So basically the di dipole is now done. Well that's all for today. The dipole is basically done. The wires are cut, they're soldered, they're measured, they're measured long. So the next thing I have to do is get it hung up in the trees and then I'll come back and turn the camera on and make another video and show you how I'm going to use the MFJ antenna analyzer to tune the antenna. Remember, it's a little bit long, so we may have to put it, take it up and down a couple times and change the length. But we'll get it tuned up using the MFJ analyzer. Again, thanks for watching. This is Randy, K7AGE.